Hello friends, welcome back. I am Professor S. S. Kale. Let us see the new topic from the transmission system. In this particular lecture, we are going to discuss about what is differential gearbox, where it is used, and what are its application. Let us see why differential gearbox is required. So, as we know that when we are going for a, taking a turn, let's consider this particular vehicle. When it's taking a turn, the inner wheel has to transfer with less distance, whereas outer wheel has to cover a more distance here if you see inner wheel circle it has an radius of 10 meter whereas the outer wheel has an radius of 11.5 meters in this case you will see that the inner wheel has to cover a more distance compared to outer wheel means inner wheel rotation required is less and outer wheel rotation required is more if i provide one one axle when solid axle then both wheel will be rotating at the same speed and if both wheel are rotating with the same speed then skidding will occur to this particular wheel and unnecessary loading will be done on the axle in order to avoid that we should have an arrangement which will make inner wheel to be rotated at lesser speed outer wheel has to be rotated at more speed and for that particular case we are going to use a differential gearbox so function of differential gearbox is to change the speed of inner wheel and outer wheel while taking the turn whereas when you are going on a normal load normal road the speed of both wheel should be same that means this the distance covered by both wheel should be the same if you go for a turn then inner wheel has to be rotated with lesser speed compared to the outer wheel for satisfying this we are going to use this particular device that is what called a differential gearbox now let's understand construction of this differential gearbox and then let we will see the working of this in a differential gearbox this bevel pinion this is bevel pinion that is connected to the propeller shaft we have already seen the final drive the final drive was a two bevel gear this is pinion bevel gear and this is a crown wheel these two we have seen that there are various types of bevel gear like straight bevel gear uh, cycloid bevel, bevel gear uh, hypoid bevel gear these are various types of bevel gear we have seen it so this is the final drive which is provided in differential gearbox so this is the input shaft for the differential gearbox on which bevel pinion is mounted bevel pinion is meshed with another crown wheel this particular shaft is going for a left side wheel whereas this shaft is going for a right side wheel and remember that this shaft is not solid one so there is a cut here these two shafts are not connected with each other this shaft starts at this point and it goes to the left side wheel this shaft starts at this point and goes to the right side wheel this crown wheel is mounted on the left shaft freely freely it indicates that the hole present in this particular crown wheel is bigger than that of the shaft size so that we can rotate a crown wheel without taking the shaft very easily this crown wheel is connected to this particular cage or sometimes it's also called as a spider so this cage is connected on the cage there is a vertical shaft that is what called as a cross pin that is what called as a cross pin and this cross pin on this particular cross pin the planet pinion are mounted this planet pinion is freely mounted over the spider means the planet pinion can rotate without rotation of this cross pin this planet pinion are in mesh with the another gear that is gear a and b that is called as sun gear and sun gear is mounted on the shaft so here we have to understand the construction very carefully without understanding construction the knowing working of this will be quite difficult for that purpose let's generally power is transmitted from a uh, propeller shaft to the bevel pinion from bevel pinion it comes to the cross wheel crown wheel from crown wheel it comes to the cage cage to the cross pin from cross pin it goes to the gear a and b and from gear a and b it goes to the half shaft right side and left side so when it is going on a forward road at forward road there will not be any relative motion between the gear a b and the planet pinion so there will not be any relative motion the, this total assembly this total assembly acting as one solid part no relative motion will be observed so as bevel pinion rotate crown will rotate as crown will rotate cage will rotate cage will rotate this cross pin about this particular center and there may not be any relative motion between the planet pinion and sun gear and total assembly will be rotated and we will get 
both will rotating at the same same speed but when we are going when we are going for the turn let's say right side turn or left side turn then relative motion is generated in between planet pinion and sun gear so you have to remember that whenever there is a turn there will be relative motion between planet pinion and sun gear whenever there is no turn then there may not be any relative motion between planet pinion and sun gear now for better understanding of this let's consider that the both wheel this wheel right side wheel and left side wheel is rotating with rotation of n both wheel are moving forward with rotation of n and let's consider that the vehicle is taking turn towards the right side direction when vehicle is taking turn towards right side direction there will be oppose to the rotation of right side wheel or there will be a frictional resistance to the right side wheel and hence its rotation will go on reducing let's consider that the reduction in the rotation is small n so there is a reduction in the rotation of right wheel with small n and as there is a reduction in this one the relative motion will be observed in the other word in the other word and this is a hypothetic concept in the other word i can say that the sun gear is rotating in opposite direction with amount of n now let's listen carefully what i told is the total vehicle moving forward with speed n when it taking turn on right side direction there will be opposition for the rotation of right wheel because of that the speed will reduce rather than a reduction in the speed i am telling hypothetically that the speed of right wheel has reduced by an amount small n so if speed of right side will reduce by small n this planet pinion will rotate in opposite side direction if this is moving in this direction then this will be rotating in this direction with equal amount similarly if this is rotating in this direction then this particular sun gear will be rotating in a forward side direction now note that here this sun gear is rotating in opposite side direction as that of this one so this is rotating something in anti clockwise direction whereas this will be rotating something in a clockwise side direction and the rotation of this will be extra with amount of n so in the other word i can say that here reduction of speed occur by the n amount whereas here there will be increment of speed by equal to n amount so i can say that here on this particular wheel i have got a speed of n minus n same n as added here so speed on this particular left side is n plus n so hence what we have achieved is we have seen that here the speed is less by an amount of n here the speed will be more by an amount of small n and hence this particular wheel uh, left side will cover more distance compared to right side wheel and hence there may not be any skidding again when it comes to the normal load when it comes to normal road means this n will become a zero why it will become zero because there is no opposition to the right side wheel as there is no opposition to the right side wheel there will be speed only n here as there is no reduction in the speed there is no increment on the left side left side will and hence this will rotate on n so both wheel will be rotating with speed n and hence we will get a forward motion quite easily so you have to understood the concept of this particular whenever we are going on a straight road it will move like assembly whenever we are going on a turning road then there will be relative motion generated and because of relative motion generated here we will get a different speed on inner wheel and outer wheel for better understanding of this let's consider a uh, one one of the video in this particular video let's see this particular uh, diagram in this particular video this particular shaft indicates the propeller shaft this particular shaft is wheel shaft and this also wheel shaft so this is bevel pinion and this is bevel crown and this particular assembly is a sun and planet arrangement now let's see how it works currently you are not finding any relative motion between the sun wheel sun wheel and planet so there is no relative motion between these and hence the both wheel will be rotating is same so you can observe the speed of this gear and this gear is same because there is no relative motion between this and hence we are moving on the straight road now you will find that there is a relative motion has generated here there is a relative motion that means that there is we are moving on the right turn speed of this pinion is less compared to this one 
and hence we are moving forward so whenever we are going for a turn there is a relative motion you can see that relative motion is present over here and as relative motion is there we can go on the particular direction when there is no relative motion available it means that we are moving on the straight road so this condition shows a straight road condition no relative motion here you can see the relative motion is not available the gears are not moving so relative motion is not there and that's why it works as one assembly and now it has started moving it has started relative motion means what it will be going for a turn so this is quite clear from this particular diagram that the rotation of this is less and rotation of this is more and we can also different speed for different turns so by this particular video the concept of differential gearbox will be clear generally differential gearbox understanding on the paper is quite difficult if you go for number of videos available on the youtube you will be understood in better way thank you very much for listening